Hello, I'm Tim Barnwell, and welcome to the Face of Appalachia. I lived on Bee Tree. I was Rice. My daddy and mother was Wooded and Bonnie Rice, and I lived on the head of Bee Tree. Um, that's off the East Fork Road. It's just across the hill, actually. But uh, and then when I married Johnny, I came over here in 1949. And I've been over here ever since. When I grew up, I was born in '33. I was actually born in the Depression, so I, I never knew we were poor. I never knew that we were sure. I mean. I never cared, I guess, because we had plenty to eat, and, and that's, uh, we didn't have clothes like some kids, you know, when they was wealthy. They had new dresses, new things. Well, we just had hand-me-downs of somebody out road something, they moved it on down to us. You know, I had an older sister, and, and uh, so people would make clothes out of feed bags. You bought, like, uh, pretty flowered bags of uh, feed, hog feed and stuff come in, like mash and stuff. And uh, people would go, and the mamas would pick out the ones they wanted, and then they'd wash them and fix them and make dresses or little girls' dresses or, or whatever out of You've been listening to Lockie Coates, one of my longtime friends, share a family story from a conversation we had in 2006. In January of 2021, I got a call that she passed away. I met Lockie and her husband Johnny back in 1982, and we became good friends. I got to know her children, Dale and Yvonne, and watched their families grow up. Over the years, Lockie invited me to her church for Sunday services, river baptisms, dinners on the ground, funerals, grave decorations, and family gatherings. Johnny passed away in 2003 and was buried at the church cemetery on the steep hill above their farm. I made a habit of continuing to visit Lockie, picking up a meal on the way to share at her home in the Grapevine section of Madison County, North Carolina. We would spend hours talking as she recalled childhood memories and shared stories about her children and grandchildren. Her passing was a great loss to her community, church members, family, friends, and to me personally. A few years earlier, I had lost two other longtime friends, Peggy and Nathan Harmon, from the same community. They were distant relatives of the Coates. I had been to their farm on many occasions, visiting and making photographs. Peggy's parents and her Aunt Alice lived on the same property, and folks from around the community would come to visit or to grind molasses at the mill on their farm. Following is a story Peggy shares from 2002 about a group of Mars Hill College students that Dr. Harley Jolly brought to their farm in time of need. If you'd like to know more about the amazing Dr. Jolly, check out the link in the description below. Hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Lockie and Peggy. Upcoming episodes will be devoted to them and their families, and we'll hear more fascinating stories as we take an in-depth look into their lives, as well as the many more folk I've met along the way. Daddy was four years old when they moved there, and he was 96 when he died, so he'd been there for 92 years on that place. So you can see why that blood still in me very deep. He made molasses up until 75. My daddy had a real bad spell with uh, what we call now vertigo. That particular year that he got sick, he had the largest crop that he had had in several years. And a large, I mean a large cane patch. And mother said, how in the world are we going to get that cane patch made up? So Dr. Jolly had been coming down to the house when they were making molasses, taking photographs. He told Mother, said, uh, we've been thinking about something, and said, uh, we want to help you all get those molasses made. So Dr. Jolly brought his classes down every day till all those molasses were made. There would be about maybe 10, 12, 15 boys and girls, and I mean nobody's sure. The girls were just as hard as the boys, and the boys as hard as the girls. And they went into the field, and they stripped the fodder off the cane. They cut the heads off. They cut it and hauled it down on a sled to the furnace. And 
They just done everything that was to be done. And they were as happy as Lark and Mother cooked for. And that made them even happier. The passing of the Coates and Harmons brought home how many of the people I knew and photographed are no longer with us. A quick look through my three Appalachian books made me realize that well over half of the people I had included are gone. The loss of these incredible folk inspired me to find a new way to honor their memory and share the story of their lives, which is why I have started the Face of Appalachia channel. If you love Appalachia as I do, I hope you'll come back often and consider subscribing to make it possible for us to create content that you'll enjoy as we continue to celebrate the people, culture, and rich heritage of Appalachia. Over the 40 years I've worked on this endeavor, I've recorded hundreds of hours of my conversations with the people I photographed. In upcoming episodes, we'll spend time getting to know them as they share their unique experiences and memories in their own words and through current conversations with their family and friends. As the stories unfold, you'll gain a new appreciation of this richly textured culture and its hardworking and resilient people. If you share my interest in the people and places I call home, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to learn more about this way of life.